In some aspects, I think maybe Pagani is trying a little too much to bring out the artsiness in their cars. This is gonna be a fun video because it's not every day that Pagani drops a new model. In fact, they've only dropped three new models since 1999 and this is the brand new Pagani Utopia. Pagani thankfully didn't get the memo about producing more hybrid cars and this has resulted in a twin turbo AMG V12 power plant making 852 horsepower and 811 pound feet of torque and it will be offered with a proper manual transmission. It just sounds nuts to combine a manual with this power plant but what we're gonna do in this video is I want to talk about this design. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting design and an interesting evolution from Pagani to go in this direction. It's still very much so a Pagani when you look at it, but I'm just not sure if it's a better design compared to the Huayra, for example. We're going to compare the Zonda, Huayra, and the new Utopia in just a second. So Pagani will only make 99 coupes and they've all been sold at a price of 2.5 million dollars a piece. Some people might think that two and a half million dollars for a car is a bit absurd, but I like to think of it like this. I'd rather pay two and a half million for a piece of art that I can actually drive rather than pay, for example, $20 million for a Picasso painting that I can stare at on the wall. Now, looking at the design, I always like to write down my very first impressions when I see a car. What feeling jumps out to me the first seconds I see a car and then I write it down and I share it here and here in this videos and in this case what I wrote down was thinking that this was a Huayra just based on the proportions and I, I think the color helped with that as well then I started noticing the graphics and they looked more like a modernized cool version of a Zonda which made me even more confused until I realized that this is the brand new Utopia. So let's jump in to Photoshop here and let's have a look at this design. So I, I think Pagani is one of these brands that um, have the ability to mix art with automotive design in a very unique way and I think they are doing it the best out of all the uh, manufacturers out there but that also makes it you know art it depends on who's looking at it and what they perceive from the the piece that they're looking at that's what all art is about and just have a look at details such as this uh, squiggly line that holds the side mirrors upside down, you know, pieces like this, you just don't see it from any other manufacturer than Pagani. And then we have brand new headlights. Everything is brand new here, but it does look like a mix between the, the, uh, the Huayra and the Zonda mix into something new. This lower part right here, I think sometimes in some aspects, I think maybe Pagani is trying a little too much to bring out the artsiness in their cars. And I'm not sure if there's a, too, a little too much going on inside here. We have this piece in the middle and then we have these very thin winglets or whatever you want to call these. And then we have a center line with the, light, with the fog light sitting out on this piece. This looks almost like an art deco piece to me. If I were to think up a Art Deco hypercar, I think this would come pretty close. But that doesn't mean that, that it necessarily looks beautiful. I don't think this is as beautiful as the Huayra. It looks unique and different, but it's, it just doesn't feel as beautiful as the Huayra, in, in my opinion. And I think it has to do with all these things that's added onto this design. We have this typical Pagani roofline and the silhouette of this car. Then we have some winglets or some air inlet, inlets and outlets in the lower pieces of the car, as you can see right here. We have 22s in the rear, we have 21 inch wheels in the front end. I do love the wheel design of this car, they look absolutely fantastic. Then we have a bit of a curvature in the very end of this piece going up in the end here, housing the very uh, typical uh, graphics for uh, Pagani. As you can see we have the quad tailpipes right here in a circle and then we have an ellipse 
housing this circle and then these uh, taillights beautifully done looks a lot like the like a modernized Honda. So I think this angle is probably the best angle f for me looking at this car. We have this carved out section here as you can see creating this monocoque piece sitting inside the body so it feels like it's two different volumes combined in one very cool design from Pagani and the interior I you know I can't, I can't say that I'm a fan of this interior. This feels, if we look at this piece right here, this looks like a 80s American car. I can't believe I'm saying that. Some of you will be pissed because I said that, but just to, that, that's the first impression that I get is we have this very boxy design and I don't think it goes well with the exterior design. And same thing here, comparing it with the Zonda and the Wire, I think something, there are more disconnected pieces in this design than, than there are in, in previous Pagani's. But again, craftsmanship is what uh, Pagani does the best. I have so much respect for the brand itself and for the, att the attention to detail that they put in in every single piece of this car. As I said, nobody really does it like Pagani does. So let's have a look at the side view of the, from going from the Zonda, going to the Waira, and then all the way down to the Utopia. We still have a very clear design identity of Pagani. They still have looked, if you look at a Pagani, you're definitely gonna instantly recognize it as being a Pagani because it has a very unique look to it. You can see the greenhouse on the Zonda, just how far forward it actually sits compared to the volumes of the other proportions of the car. But then we have the same lines in the Waira, but I think they just refined everything for this car. This looks like a more grown up car than the Zonda, and it's just a beautiful piece of art, a sculpture on wheels. That is exactly what the what, what the Waira is for me. We have this line and cutting into the body going into the fenders. And I also love the design of these wheels. Looking at the Utopia here at the bottom, you can see that it's still a pretty uh, stripped down design, but it has a lot more curvature to it. It's a very, very Italian design, this car. And I think more so than the Waira when it comes to looking bad at, back at what Italians did. In, in, the 60, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This has some inspiration from that. You can see the, for example, the uh, evolution of the air outlet in the side here, it got a lot more organic. This feels like a way more organic design than the previous generations. But then I come to think about a, another hypercar that was recently introduced, and that takes away all the, uh, the attention I have for this Pagani Utopia, and that is the Koenigsegg CC850. This car to me is just, it, it puts Koenigsegg in a, in a completely new level when it comes to hypercar design. And when I look at them like this, I just can't help but compare these two when I first saw the, the, the new Utopia and compare it to the CC850. And I have to say, I clearly, prefer the CC850 and it's not just because it's a Swedish car it's because of the timeless design in the CC850. The thing is if you look at the Utopia and all the things the graphics that go 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 on in the in the design of the car and then you look at this gorgeous clean cut Koenigsegg which still has a lot of emotion to it as I said in the video about it I think it's a great mix between clean cut Scandinavian design and then applying some sprinkling a little bit of Italian passion onto the uh, simplistic Scandinavian design and we have this beautiful timeless car. The thing is I know this will be just as beautiful in 20-30 years like it as it is today if not more and the reason I know that is because if we go back and look at the car that the, the CC850 was inspired by the CC8S which was Koenigsegg's first production car that car still looks gorgeous today and modern at the same time and that's why I know the CC850 will be just as beautiful in the future as well. So to sum it up I hear about the uh, Pagani Utopia I think uh, Pagani has clearly cut themselves a niche when it comes to design mixing it with art looking 
there is so much going on in this design that, that it's a sculpture. There, there's a lot of sculpture, sculpturing features in this design. As I said, Art Deco, I get some Art Deco vibes from it. And I'm really glad that Pagani exists and, and are able to create cars like this. Because if they weren't unique before, they're going to get a lot more unique in the future because of all the EVs and hi hybrid cars that comes out. Now, when it comes to timelessness of these designs, I know that the current exec is going to be a beauty a hundred years from now. And the thing is, I don't think I can say the same about the Pagani Utopia.